Hey everyone, I'm your guide and this is the 8th in a series with more than 150 entries where we'll look at the fascinating and often frightening monsters inscribed in our trusty monster manual. In each entry, we'll cover what's in the manual, but also other interesting tidbits I found in my travels. This companion series is meant to educate, entertain, and elevate your excursions into the more dangerous areas of the Forgotten Realms. Everywhere from the cemetery behind your local church to the Nine Hells and everywhere in between and even some places much, much more interesting. So come, join me. Let's begin. Travelers sometimes find objects that look like pieces of remarkably lifelike stone carvings of wildlife. Missing parts appear to have been bitten off from time to time. Seasoned explorers regard such relics as warnings knowing that the basilisk that created them is likely to be nearby, because no one carves statues of frightened warriors. So if you see one, keep your eyes closed and your ears open. Basilisks are large eight-legged reptiles that thrive in arid, temperate, or even tropical climates. These monstrosities grow to about six feet in length, not including the tail, and 13 feet in length, including the tail. They typically weigh in at about 300 pounds and can come in a variety of colors, from dark gray to dark orange but I've also heard of some variants existing with a dull brown body and yellowish underbelly. Along their back, they possess a single row of bony spines that extends from the top of their head all the way down their back and tail, and as for males, a few specimens even have a curved horn set neatly atop their noses. However, their most notable feature happens to be their eyes, which glow with a pale green light and carry some rather interesting properties that we'll talk about in a little bit. As mentioned before, basilisks can be found nearly everywhere, arid, temperate, and tropical climates, but can also be found in subterranean biomes as well. Typically though, basilisks will shelter within burrows, caves, or other similar areas. Like other reptilian creatures, basilisks are cold-blooded, they derive much of their energy from the heat of the sun and spend much time sunning themselves on rocks or heights to gather heat. But unlike most reptiles, they can still tolerate other climates as well. In regards to behavioral tendencies, basilisks are ponderous creatures and have a very slow metabolism. This leads to their movements being surprisingly sluggish and clumsy for a hunter. As a result, basilisks rely on their powerful magical characteristics to capture their prey and are typically unprepared for a rigorous pursuit. The way they get around this physical shortcoming is by lairing in hidden dens and waiting for any unfortunately unsuspecting prey to wander in so they can essentially spring their trap. Basilisks are typically lazy and even cowardly creatures, but evilly cunning. They're almost always going to lair in an area with immediate access to water and a food supply. They're easily angered, but won't necessarily fight to the death if prompted. They're also fairly irrational creatures, and I've heard some people claim they're borderline insane half the time, but then shrewd hunters the other half of the time. When hunting, they'll usually lay in wait for their prey to wander into their lair. After having the victim in their sight, They'll pounce from the darkness and attack with their petrifying gaze, and follow up with a vicious bite. Once the prey is petrified, they use their powerful jaws to take a bite from the statue. What's interesting here is, due to their magical nature, once the bite is swallowed, the stone returns back to its original state. So for example, an adventurer is petrified in a basilisk's lair. The basilisk will then take a bite of the stone adventurer, and once that bite of stone is in the basilisk's stomach, it is able to be digested as one might normally digest food. So with their slow metabolism, basilisks only need to eat about one large meal per month. A large meal for a basilisk would typically be around the size of a deer or a humanoid. But that's not to say they won't gorge themselves endlessly if they have enough access to meat. I've even heard of them quite literally eating themselves to death. In regards to the abilities basilisks possess, there's really only one thing to talk about, isn't there? 
I've mentioned that a basilisk can actually digest stone, but why would they, you ask? Well, if you didn't already know, the basilisk's gaze can change a living being into a statue of stone in a heartbeat. Precisely how the creature's gaze works is a mystery. In my studies, I've read that the creature's eyes emit a radiation if absorbed by the eyes of another creature causes an inexplicable chemical change in the bloodstream of the prey. Clothing, accessories, and objects carried by the victims are not affected, despite some wild tales to the contrary. And beings that are able to assume a gaseous form, typically through magic, are completely unaffected by the basilisk's gaze. A basilisk has two translucent eyelids, upper and lower, kind of like the membranes covering the eyes of a frog. It's when this lower inner eyelid is drawn back that the gaze is unleashed upon the basilisk's prey. I also want to note that the basilisk's eyes are on opposite sides of its head, and thus it commands a very wide field of vision. So keep that in mind if you're trying to sneak up on one of these creatures. However, I do want to emphasize the fact that the basilisk cannot petrify their target if the target doesn't meet the basilisk's eyes with their own eyes. Now let's do a short section on basilisk reproduction. Most of the time, basilisks you encounter will be alone, as they're usually solitary creatures. But if they're nesting or mating, you can absolutely find them paired up with their partner. It's said that basilisks mate for life, and they'll do so out of instinct every four summers, and usually in water, which helps support their slow, heavy bodies. One or two days after mating, the female will lay a cluster of eggs from one to eight, each about the size of a man's fist. After laying its eggs, the mother will then cover them in cool sand or mud and they'll go on to nest the eggs for four to six weeks, in which time they'll hatch into young basilisks from two to four inches long. And these hatchlings grow quite rapidly, reaching man-sized in four to six months after being born. Last but not least, let's cover some of the other interesting bits of lore regarding this creature. Because of the aforementioned petrifying power, the basilisk has long been the source of fascination among mages. Alchemists have found two parts of the basilisk's eye to be particularly useful. The internal lens and the fluid of its eye are said to be used as ingredients in potions, spell inks, and the making of items concerned with petrifying creatures. Other parts of the basilisk are sometimes tried for similar such purposes, but apparently with significantly less success. And before we finish this entry, I want to also mention that basilisks can actually be domesticated in a way. Some individuals even use basilisks as guardians, usually chained in a particular location and fed by hooded attendants, so as not to get themselves petrified. Seeing how basilisks are certainly not intelligent beings by any stretch of the imagination, if you can make them comfortable and give them a steady source of food, they'll become complacent and not usually try to escape. But for that very same reason, don't expect to be able to train them in any way beyond that. In conclusion, these fascinatingly fearsome beasts are ponderous hunters who are not inherently malicious, but are certainly still dangerous by all accounts. They can digest actual stone, be domesticated by a sufficiently determined mage, and even just stop an intruder in their tracks with nothing more than a glance. So if you come across a cave that has what appears to be statues of animals and adventurers, keep your head down and back out of there. Okay guys, that'll cover the basilisk for today. Thank you for listening to this entry and I hope everyone is having a really great day. If you turn the page in our monster manual, you'll see that our next subject is the Bahir, which I don't actually know a ton about just off the top of my head, so I'm not sure what to expect. Anyways, if you like this series, hit that like and sub button, but for now, this is your guide signing out. Be safe, take care, and happy trails.